We are back with our guest for today, Faizun Kamal. Faizun is an award-winning franchise coach, nationally renowned public speaker, and best-selling author. As CEO of Franchise Pros, she coaches people nationwide in marketing the transition from employee to entrepreneur. Her best-selling book, The Right Franchise for You, Escape the Nine to Five, Generate Wealth, and Live Life on Your Terms, is the guide that thousands of clients have used to find their perfect fit in franchising. Welcome to the show, Faizun. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's a delight to be here with you ladies. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Uh, oh, fabulous. We're, we are so excited to have you. You have no idea. Am I. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting. This, the whole show is dedicated to uh, franchising and specifically women in franchising and which is why I'm so curious about your journey uh, into the world of franchising. Can you share with us a little bit about that journey? Absolutely, absolutely. Delighted to be here and thank you again so much. Um, like most of my career, uh, my journey into franchising has not been a straight path. Uh, I suppose nothing in life that's worthwhile ever mm -hmm. is a straight path. Um, really, I would say, you know, Rebecca, my journey into this world began about five years ago. I was in the corporate world. Uh, I was a corporate executive, had the 80 hour work weeks. And, you know, my life had gotten to a point where it was very high stakes, very high stress, always on that hamster wheel, um, always feeling like the day was never long enough to get things done. Uh, but more importantly for me, what I had realized for a long time was that the path that I had been on, the work that I was doing as important and as meaningful as that work was to the constituents who we were doing it for, it was not my path. Oh. And it, you know, I don't have a lot of eloquent words, but it wasn't my path. And I'd all, I had looked for it for a long time. And so in 2015, um, the company that I was with, uh, they had been having wave after wave of layoffs. And in that particular layoff, my position got eliminated. Um, I tell you, it was one of those situations where it wasn't a blessing in disguise. It was a straight up blessing, mm -hmm. truly. Mm -hmm. And I remember the moment so viscerally, uh, it was as though the big boulder that had been on my chest for about eight years, that's how long I was in, in corporate America, uh, somebody had finally lifted that boulder off and said, Faizun, you can breathe now. And so I left, um, I left my life as an employee behind. Um, one thing led to another, but I very quickly came to the realization that I needed to stop looking for happiness where I had lost it. Um, I had thought about going back into the corporate world and until it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I said, what are you doing? That is no longer, you knew that was not your path. What are you going to do now? And so the one thing led to another that led me into the world of franchises. And, you know, Elizabeth, you kind of read the, the tagline to my book. And the mm -hmm. tagline is, Ape the nine to five, generate wealth and live life on your terms. Uh, those were the three key things that I was looking for in my life with my family. Um, and I had never found it in all the different things that I had done over the years. And finally, after finding this world of franchises that I knew nothing about, I was really floored. You know, like so many, we are on a podcast that's so aptly named The Franchise Woman. Mm -hmm. There are millions of highly qualified, educated, professional women who my friends, I think, are truly leading lives of quiet desperation. Mm -hmm. they, they're very qualified. They're so good at what they do. And yet that their, their inner lives feel hollow. They feel empty because they are not doing work that is their calling. They're not on the path that they feel they need to be on. Uh, in, in a nutshell, that's really sort of the, my how many years journey, I don't even know, that brought me into this world condensed for you and how I find myself where I am today. Wow. And you know that that same journey you were on where you finally could take that boulder off of your chest is what a lot of your clients are also feeling. 
is, is this really my calling? Is this really my passion? Is this really my purpose? Um, is this really who I am, this corporate employee? And don't get me wrong, there are some people that really is the right place they're supposed to be. But the type of people you're working with are people with similar journeys as you, asking the same questions. Who am I? What do I want to become? Where am I going? What's important to me? Absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. And, you know, in this particularly um, at a time where globally things have completely, the, the ground has shifted beneath our feet. We are living through the midst of an epidemic, of a pandemic, the likes that we haven't really seen in our lifetimes. I think particularly now when there's so much, we all feel there's so much at stake. So many people have lost their jobs. So many people are living in fear that they're going to lose their jobs. I think for those, and again, we're talking to sort of the, the, um, an audience of women, but for those women who think they don't have an option, uh, they've been an employee, to take the time now to say, should I be exploring different things? There's a lot out there. Uh, you know, one of the key things um, that clients love about this process is all of our lives as employees, Think of the last time you applied for a job. To a, to a certain extent, you are trying to force fit yourself into the job description. Mm -hmm. Whatever the job description mm -hmm. is, you might meet eight out of the 10 things. The other two, you convince yourself and you try to convince the employer, you can do it. No, no, no. When you start to look at franchises, it is absolutely the other way around. You come, to the, you come to the table fully empowered, not in this sort of subservient, please give me a job kind of stance, but you come to the table fully empowered to say, hey, here's who I am. This is what I have done as a corporate executive. Can you share with me a little bit about what your business is about? There is no force fitting. Mm -hmm. The business has to fit you, the client. It's an amazing transformation that I see in my clients eyes and I hear in their voices once that once that shift occurs absolutely well and I think when you, as you're going through that process um, we had talked a little before the show about authenticity and I, I have found that in my life in my past um, anytime I stepped off and away from my own authenticity what I wanted what my goals were what my dreams were what my, what I was good at what my gifts were uh, things didn't go nearly so well and when I Scooted myself back where I knew I was supposed to be in my little zone, um, things went better. So how do you help people navigate from where they're not happy to where they're living their authentic life? Um, because I think sometimes it's hard. We lack self-awareness. We have fear. We have all of these things going through our heads. So to find what that path is and identify how to get there, um, how do you push people through that? Absolutely. That, that's, that's a fantastic question. Authenticity. Um, you know, so in the book that you mentioned, I go through the six step process that I take every client through. Mm -hmm. And if you think of, if you think of the journey ladies as a two part, there is a very internally self focused focusing part of the process. And then the second part of the process is more external. Um, most clients will come to me and they think, oh, you're immediately going to hand me a list of brands and I'm going to start calling them and finding out about them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's going to happen down the road. That is not where we begin. Where we begin is to say, Elizabeth, who are you? Mm -hmm. You know, beyond your resume. Rebecca, who are you? Beyond your LinkedIn profile. Beyond all those things that we typically use in the professional world to introduce ourselves to each other. Hi, I'm Faizun, I'm a franchise consultant. What do you do? Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that. I wanna know who the real Rebecca is. What are her superpowers? Because I know you have them, because <laughs> I do too, right? What are your blind spots? What are those things you would rather get your tooth pulled out without lidocaine than do those things? <laughs> we all have them. I want to know what those things are. <laughs> and it is, I know you laugh. Um, it's, it's in being able to peel back the layers of the onion that every client is that I get to the heart of who they truly are. What mm -hmm. makes them tick? 
you know, one of the things I like to ask my clients and everyone laughs when I say this because they think I'm being very Pollyanna-ish. I'm not. <laughs> I say, all right, guys, boys and girls, what's that one thing? Think about it. It could be something completely inconsequential, but it could be telling. What's that one thing or a couple of things, you know, when you do them, you lose all track of time. Mm -hmm. You are in, Great your question. Soul, in your flow. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't need anybody to pay me. I just love what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Is there something like that? Now, some clients might say, no, Faizun, I, I, I really don't. Okay, there's nothing bad in that. A second question I would ask would be, okay, if that's the case, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of your interests? Your friends and family, your best friend, your mom, your dad, your spouse, what would they say? Oh my gosh, Rebecca is a ninja at fill in the blank. Those people know you best. Mm -hmm. There might be a way in which that superpower is what a particular franchise of mine is looking for. Um, I spend probably, this is quite different from a lot of other consultants in this industry. I spent quite a bit of time on the front end talking about things that I don't think client thinks I'm going to talk about. They think we'll immediately jump into brands. That mm -hmm. comes down later. This is sort of the, the foundational work that we need to do, where once we get you aligned with what you're, who you truly are and what it is you want to do moving forward, then comes the second part of, all right, now that we have a sense of who you are, let's start to look at some businesses that require the kind of superpowers that you are going to be bringing to the table. I, I like this process um, of self-discovery, self-assessment, and I think your point is accurate. Most of us have spent our lives, square peg, ground hole, or vice versa, trimming off parts of ourselves so we can be what somebody else expects us to be, either in a job role or in a place in society. So it's not often we stop and ask those questions that you have just mentioned. Who am I? What are my superpowers? How would I like to show up in the world and express myself? How am I unique and different? Where are my blind spots and where am I weak? It's not often we ask that. We're always trying to measure up to somebody else's uh, standard. So, but without it, this process is only, it's, it's not complete. You have to start there before you can even consider what businesses might be a beautiful fit for that prospective franchisee to fully express who they are. So I guess my question is, do you ever get pushback from your prospective franchisee that says, oh, you're getting too personal or, or, you know, I haven't really thought about that. I mean, do you ever get pushback? And if so, how do you, how do you address that? Because it is a self-discovery process. It is, it's, it's it is vul vulnerable, right? It's a place of vulnerability. You know, it's, it's interesting. I think um, I have never had direct pushback to say, whoa, 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 what are you doing? I have had pushback in other ways. Mm, so, and what I found is clients who are uncomfortable doing that self-discovery typically end up falling out of the process. Mm -hmm. They will choose to take themselves out. Uh, it's too uncomfortable. It is too personal. Why are you wasting my time? I came to you. You're going to give me a business. I'm going to buy the business. Boom, bam, boom. I'm done. Why are you asking me all these <laughs> other sorts of, you know, touchy feely things that I don't want to talk about, which by the way is completely okay. We live in a free country, but if mm -hmm. you come to me and you want to work with me, as your coach, this is a very definite process that I will take you through. And I know it works because I have placed dozens and dozens and dozens of people into franchises who are happy franchisees right now. So yeah, that, that I think, again, it, it depends on the individual. Um, I think certainly one of the things, Rebecca, that I do get is a little bit of a, whoa, I can't remember the last time somebody asked me this. Or even cared. Or even cared. Yeah. Well, this is maybe not what I thought I was signing up for. Okay, okay, give me a moment, give me a moment. And then, you know, they, they, they wrap that around their heads. And then we begin the process. But, I mean, for the most part, again, the, the people that I work with, I love my clients. You know, by the time they get through to the end of the process, 
every client that I have ever placed in a business, ladies, they're friends of mine now. Yeah. They, you know, they text me, they email me, I keep in touch. Hey, what's going on? What's happening? Uh, because I think for lack of a better word, this process is one that gets very intimate. Yes, it does. If you truly want this to work, it has to get intimate. Um, it is so not transactional. Of course, it's mm -hmm. transactional. You're buying a business. But the relationship that I develop mm -hmm. with my clients is the opposite of transactional. It's, a, it's very much a partnership where I say, look, if you've come to me, I will take your hand, I will hold your hand, and we will walk through this valley together, and I will bring you out at the other end. Uh, but it's a very specific way in which I do. Uh, and again, you know, it's one of those things, right? What's the saying? Uh, the teacher appears when the student is ready. Is ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for those people who ball, who say, oh my gosh, what the heck just happened? I say, you know, you, you're right. This is probably not what you expected. Um, but, you know, this is an essential part of discovering who you are so that you can discover the business that's right for you. But if this is something that you don't think is the right cup of tea for you, uh, by all means, and I wish them well, and I'll think of yeah. I think it's, it's so interesting to me when I was doing a lot more marketing um, and trying to help people with their branding and messaging and websites and that kind of thing. It, I always was amazed at how few people knew who they were and mm -hmm. could articulate what their business was in a sentence or two or a few words even. Um, and, and we took them through a similar process with a different goal. But the, the idea that so many adult business people have not taken the time to think, who am I? What do I want? Why do I want to do what I want to do? You know, the why is always such the important question. What drives you? Um, mm -hmm. So I was wondering, have you had someone who just had a re revelatory experience where they thought, oh, I didn't know this is who I was, but it is, and really made a, like dove right in and, and went with your process? Do you have someone that comes to mind? Because I think that's such a fascinating problem when people buy in. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, he just texted me while I was in the waiting room waiting for you ladies. <laughs> oh, how fun. Um, he, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. So I'll give you your fake name, uh, Darren. Um, <laughs> so Darren began, Darren came to me um, when I was leading a franchise workshop locally. So he, um, he's in service, he's in the military. And he attend a, attended a workshop for soldiers who are in transition. And the moment I met him, you know how some people, they just light you up with their energy? Mm -hmm. He was like that. And he basically, long story short, he said, by Zoom, I have looked for a business for a long time. I guess maybe I was waiting for you. I just didn't know who I would go to. I didn't know where I would begin. So we had a fantastic conversation. Now, he had some medical injuries that he was in the process of getting addressed. So I said, all right, well, let's put this on the back burner. Uh, let's make sure that you are fully healthy and where you need to be before we even begin this process. So this is, I'm talking probably a year ago. So we stayed in touch. He stayed in touch, kept me updated with what happened. And then fast forward, um, I introduced him to a brand. And I said, listen, I have a sense of who you are now. Um, I really think this may be your perfect fit. He began the due diligence process. The second call, first, I wanna say first, maybe it was the second call he had with the brand. He calls me up immediately and he says, Faizun, I am done, this is it. Aww. And I started laughing. And I said, really? Aren't you being a little too premature? <laughs> there are a couple of steps left. <laughs> and he said, I mean, no, 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 I'm, I'm saying I'll go through the process with you, but I'm just saying to you, they're the one for me. Now, the, it, was, it was a combination of things, ladies. And I think this is, the, this is the alchemy that as a coach, I am able to see firsthand. And it is the most delightful thing when it happens. Um, it, was, it, was really, it was really a meeting point for, for who he was, his personality, his strengths, what he brought to the table. He's very analytical. He likes to analyze things, but he also has a very nice balance of the qualitative skills. Very interpersonal, very communicative. It was just a really fantastic fit. The brand itself, 
he, like every other client that I have, they want to know if the numbers make sense. Mm -hmm. Will I make money? I'm starting a business. Will I make money? And my answer is, I don't know. I think you will if you apply yourself, but that's a conversation for you to have with the brand. And so he went through the due diligence process and, you know, it's, it's interesting. He did all of this while we were in the throes of the pandemic. Mm. At one part of the process, he got a scare. He has a baby that just turned one year old. The baby wasn't feeling well. He called me at the end of a long day and said, Faizun, I spent the entire day driving around from hospital to hospital with my wife and my child, trying to see if they would give us COVID tests because I think my baby might have COVID. I'm not sure. Long story short, the, the baby was fine. They were fine. It was a really ugly bout of the flu that they all ended up having. But the tenacity, the perseverance with which he stuck to the process and did what he needed to do, that was very telling of what he would become as yeah. a franchisee. Mm -hmm. You know, ladies, one of the things I always say, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Mm -hmm. If you are lackadaisical, you don't meet deadlines, you don't follow process, you have a call with someone, you show up 10 minutes later, <laughs> that's who you are. Mm -hmm. that's you know that extends into the rest of your life so it was um he was just a delight to work with absolute delight to work with so yeah when the fit happens that's where the magic begins and you can see it it completely transforms the process I, I really believe and I've seen this you know in my 27 years working with franchise brokers like yourself it's almost a visceral feeling that the client has Yes. when they get that fit right and it is such it's like all the light bulbs go on they can sense this is the right business uh for me but it's your job then you know prior to that to weed through all the ones that are not so you can narrow it down to a few that are very likely but that requires you as you pointed out to truly know who they are which means they have to go through your process and be transparent themselves and authentic themselves and be willing to reveal who they are for you to do your best job so they can get that light up or that visceral feeling or that just this is it this is it for zoom this is the right business uh, for me yeah. what a what a fulfilling uh job <laughs> business you now have Wow. Look, I, the work I do, uh, I say it very plainly, it's my calling. I, there's nothing, 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 nothing else that I want to do. This is it for me. So, you know, just like I ask my clients the question, I jump out of bed every morning, my friends. There is no alarm clock. <laughs> I jump out of bed because I'm excited to begin my day because my day is full of things that I want to do. Not because my boss told me, you know, I don't have meetings, endless meetings that result in nothing with colleagues that I don't much care for. It's none of that. My day is filled with things that I want to do. And again, for clients, that's really what I'm trying to, to, trying to replicate. Let's get you into a business where you jump out of bed every morning. You can't wait to begin your day. Yeah. yeah. Bedhead and all. I'm jumping out. <laughs> which, brings us, which brings us full circle, Fazoon. Um... People that are listening to this are probably asking, how do I get hold of this girl? I want, I want to talk to this passionate woman. I want to talk about the opportunity of uh, owning my own business. What's the best way of getting hold of you? Absolutely. Uh, the best way I would say, uh, shoot me an email, faizun at the franchise consulting company.com. Uh, if that's too much of a mouthful, look me up on LinkedIn. Now I have been told you guys have to, well, we are all connected on LinkedIn. So maybe you guys are not the good people to ask. But if you and I are not connected, I have been told that apparently there's only one Faizun Kamal uh, that looks like this. So I'm not that difficult to find. So connect <laughs> on LinkedIn. That is the best way. Uh, I live on LinkedIn. I have conversations all day with folks on there. Uh, I would say that would be the best way. And we will make sure that information is on our website as well. So people can, can go take a look if they can't remember all of that. Faizun, we want to thank you so much for being here. You've been a delight. Um, lots of great information. I love, I love these conversations with other women who are just killing it in the franchising Absolutely. industry. Absolutely. It's such a delight, ladies. They're Thank on you. purpose and living with passion. I love it. There yes, you go. We will talk to you again soon.
Wonderful. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.